Hey, thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. Today I'm going to show how to make this cute um, paper doll, and actually it won't be this specific one, but I'm going to show you some different techniques for how to make your paper dolls movable. Um, I've shown already in some of my videos in this playlist for paper art dolls to use a little mini brad. Obviously a mini brad is going to make that arm and leg move back and forth. But this is a different way of doing it. And I've done a video already. I did a paper doll altered book. And I have a video in there for how I made this paper doll. Her name is Cookie. And she's made out of uh, some clip art of a cookie of like a uh, bodice kind of a, a lace up little corset. And so that's why I named her Cookie. And if you can see her head and her arms are connected using eyelets and jump rings. So what I'm going to do, and her legs are as well, so she's got movable limbs that can move because they're on jump rings through eyelets that are through the cardstock. So what I'm going to do is put a link to that specific video, um, which was for a different series, but hey, it showed how, to how I made her, and you can see how I did this. It's pretty self-explanatory, but you can watch it step by step. And then I'm going to show you another way as well today. So I thought I would bring out Cookie and show you her. Um, in that video, she was pretty plain. I've dressed her up since then, so now she's got some... Um, more doodads on her with a ribbon, a bow, some little decorative flowers that were by Joe Lee, some lace that had bows, um, some mesh tool behind her that I shredded at the bottom and I just love her. She is so cute. She's one of my favorites. And she was on a paper clip and I took her off the paper clip because I am actually going to glue her in my journal and I'm only going to glue the head down so that the whole thing can just be moving based on that jump ring on her neck. So there's one way right there, and now let's move on to so the next. So today I'm going to use a paper doll set that came from an Etsy shop. This is the name of the shop right here, and I'm going to have her shop name, the link to her shop, and the link to her paper dolls. She has so many different sets, and they are just fabulous. And this one is called Free Spirit. This is page one. This is page two, and they're kind of... Free spirit hippie chicks. I love that they come with hats and different outfits. You can change them up, dress them up. You've got flowers that you can put in their hair, glasses that you can do some fun things with. And I've got some really fun ideas for one of these. So this is what I'm going to use is this kit from Etsy. So my first step is going to be to pick out which pieces I want to use. I think I'm going to use this head right here. I'm going to use uh, this body right here with the purple pants, I think. Either the purple one or... Actually, no, I think I'm going to use the purple top and the blue jean pants. So I'm going to use this one and this head. And I'm going to go ahead and do the next step, which is, even though they're printed on cardstock, I'm going to still make it even more stiff. This one definitely has to be stiffer in order for it to work. So you, regular cardstock would tear. You have to use something heavier. And so I'm going to mat this onto a thin piece of cardboard like I've done in my previous paper art doll videos. So the next step is going to be trim them out, trim the pieces I'm going to use out with a bigger space around them and put them down to a thin piece of um, cardboard that's going to be some recycled thin cardboard and I'm going to use matte gel medium and then I'm going to trim them out but I'll show you that step because there's some specific things that you're going to want to do there. So on this one the neck is perfect, that's a perfect place for the connection for that. But on this side, you don't want to put your, you wouldn't want to put an eyelet on her chin. It would look funny. So what I'm going to do is trim the chin of this one right where it's going to be instead of leaving a space. Because I'm going to glue this, when I adhere this down, it's going to go on cream colored, you know, manila colored file folder like that. And that cream color will make a nice neck piece. So when I glue this down, 
I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to add to it a neck shape that leaves you a space for where you can put your eyelet. Just put that there so I remember where to glue it. So it's going to go like that and once it's dry and I trim it out, I'm going to trim out and add that neck piece to it. And I decided to do a second one and this one what I'm going to do on this one, I would like this arm to be movable. So as I've shown in my other videos, I'm going to just take this and trim it. Trim it out and I'm going to leave the round shoulder. Like that. And I'm going to put those two pieces down with my matte medium onto cardstock and then I'm going to add to this a shape back, a shoulder back to adhere that to with a brad or I may even use an, um, a jump ring and an eyelet. So I'm going to put those these all down to my card, cardboard and I use matte gel medium and the reason for that instead of just using a glue to put down the pieces is I want to have a really good tight seal between the image that I'm putting down and the cardboard so it almost becomes one and if you use to just use glue around the edges it wouldn't be the same it wouldn't be a nice tight seal around those edges and this is just my process so you can do yours differently if you like but this is what I have found to be tried and true and works the best for me and I'm just sharing it to inspire you if you want to try it then you know how I do mine. So there's that piece and then these two pieces are going to get put down here and I always put my matte medium on the back of the image and on the card and then I go over the top of them and let them really really dry well and I do not use a heat tool to dry them I have to have patience for this process and that's because I think they get a better seal if you don't use a heat tool. Heat tool sometimes heats up that matte gel medium and just changes its consistency so you don't get as nice of a seal and it may come loose from the cardboard later And I can put this piece down. I'm just using scrap pieces of file folder. And they're file folders that were recycled. And for these two pieces, I'm using a piece of recycled cardboard from a Kleenex box. It's nice and sturdy. I like using that. So same thing. I'm going to put this on the back. And I'm going to put some matte medium down on the cardboard and don't put anything over the seams if you have a fold up edge because it will show through but this will be nice and sturdy for the bottom pieces for when I make them movable and that's the best part and then this one it's going to get trimmed a special way but uh, it's going to stay as is for gluing it down and I'll show you what I mean once it dries and I'm ready to cut them out. Okay, so now I'm just going to let these pieces dry and then I will come back and show you my cutting out steps. So I'm going to add a neck onto this one. And I'm going to cut these out and I'm leaving some space at the top of this head because I want to add something to it. I have an idea. So I'm going to cut this out about like that. Just leaving about a quarter of an inch gap. 
So in this one, I think that is a little bit too much. So I'm going to trim a little bit more away from this and just leave a little, a smaller space. I need some space because I'm going to be poking some holes in that. So that's how much I'm leaving as a space on that one. And then on this piece, I'm going to go back in like I've done in previous videos and I'm going to add that shoulder. like that and then trim these pieces out and on these heads the manila folder is a little too thin for me I think I like it a little bit thicker and I like the color of it for the neck um, but it's not quite heavy enough for adding an eyelet to it and being secure so I think what I'm going to do is cut a strip cut some strips here and to the back side, I'm going to add a strip to make those necks a little more solid. And I'm going to just glue those into place with some art glitter glue. I used my art glitter glue and I cut my little strips of cardboard out of the Kleenex box and I rounded them and then I glued them into place just to make those necks real sturdy for when I put the eyelet into place because they're going to be having something movable that they're anchored by. So that makes them nice and sturdy. So for this one with the green hair, I chose this body. She's going to go on this one, go with this one. And what I want to do for her legs is I take a pencil. Let me zoom in here. I take a pencil and right at the knee, I'm going to round that out on the upper part and on the bottom part. So see how that looks? And that's how I'm going to cut those pieces out. Here are my pieces cut out. So here's what it looks like with those pieces rounded with the legs. And then here's my two pieces for the head. And it gives room for an eyelet on the neck and here. Now what you can do because that doesn't match that skin tone is you can take some acrylic paint or a paint pen. Um, you could use a Uniposca pen and an ivory or this is a beige. You could use beige or this is a Molito and it is the color on this is Skin Pastel and I really like this one. So I'm going to come in and color that neck line on both of these right over the cardboard just to make them go together you know make them the same color so I'm just going to color them both and then they will match and already see how much better that looks so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a green and purple Uniposca pen and I'm going to color the top of this where it's white so that it's not white anymore. And I really kind of love that her hair is green and I'm going to make it green and purple. So she's really going to be a wild and crazy hippie chick. So I'm just going to go through here and use this paint pen. And then I'm going to come back in and add some... Some paint strokes so it's not so crazy that there's that line at the top like that so that really fixed that top part and Am I going to add some purple or not? I think what I'm going to do is just add a couple lines of purple. I have an idea in my head and you know how that goes. You get an idea and you can envision it. So I'm 
Okay, that just added a little bit of purple to it. And I've shown in other videos, I like to take a water brush filled with ink and I use that to go around the edges so that they're not white anymore. And you can use anything, any kind of a brush marker, brush pen, you can use a distress tool and distress ink, but this for some reason just is my go-to thing that I like the best. Next I'm going to use my crocodile on the smallest hole setting and I'm going to punch holes in the top of this head and what I want to do I want one about right here to come over the front I want one, two, three down this side and maybe two down this side. Let's try that first and see how it looks. So I've marked where I want my holes and now I'm just going to put that into my crocodile and punch out the holes and be careful not to go to the edge. You need to leave an edge. You just don't want too big of an edge, but you don't want it to tear. And this idea was inspired by an older video by Shell C. I'll put the link in my description box for her video. She makes a tag Raggedy Ann paper doll and she does this um, at the top and then she adds pieces of um, frayed material and things like that to make her doll look like Raggedy Ann. And it gave me an idea for adding these. I've done braids before on my dolls but I have um, I have just put the, the floss through the head and I thought it'd be kind of fun to try this technique. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, if you do one string, you need three strands to do a braid. So what I want to do here is on this outside hole here, I'm taking two strands of embroidery floss or one strand that I folded in half. And I'm putting it through the hole and then you put the tails through the loop and carefully tighten it on and now I'm going to do another one of those. I could definitely could have gone shorter on my embroidery floss but that's okay. I have lots so I have embroidery floss coming out my ears. I will never in my lifetime use it all, so it's okay if a little gets wasted this time. Okay, so I've done two of those, and you don't want to pull it so that you rip that cardstock. You have to just be careful. But I'm working it through like that. So now I have these strands, and there are four strands, and it takes three strands to do a braid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the weight of this to hold that down. I'm going to section this off and I'm going to have two strands together and then single strands here that's going to make my three and it is going to make this braid a little off but she's kind of off. She's a hippie chick so it won't, won't be bad. So now I'm going to just take my strands and I'm going to braid this. And you can make it as long or as short as you want. And then I'm going to hold them together where it ends and then just bring these all through a loop and tie that in a knot. To end that braid. Just like that. So then when you pull it down forward, look at that cute braid. That's adorable. I love it. So I'm going to go ahead and braid and let's see, the three worked out perfectly. So I'm going to do the same thing in all of these holds and I'm going to um, put a couple of them in purple and the rest of them in green and then I'll show you what it looks like. So once again, you're going to take your one piece of embroidery floss, you're going to fold it in half to make a loop in the center, 
You're going to go from back to front. You're going to put the tails through the loop. And carefully pull it forward. Don't pull on it. Just carefully work it forward so it attaches on that loop hole. And then next to it in the same hole, I'm going to do it again. Fold my piece in half. Make my loop. Go back in that same same hole again. Tails through the loop. Gently work it down. And that's what you have. And now I'm going to braid those pieces. I decided in those ones over her face. I'm not going to braid them. I'm just leaving them plain to be bangs. So what I can do is pull these aside and take my scissors and trim those. So before I trim them, what I'm going to do is glue them in place. I'm going to take my art glitter glue since it's got a nice fine point and I'm going to lift these up out the top and I'm going to put some art glitter glue underneath them and then I'm going to put them down into place and just kind of hold them there for a second and that'll just anchor those into place I'm going to take a straight pin next while I'm holding that into place letting that glue dry and I'm going to kind of separate the strands by just running that needle through the strands it'll separate the strings And I'm going to take my scissors and trim them. Oh my god, it's going to be so cute. And once they're trimmed, it'll be even easier to separate them. But separate out those little strings and it's going to look like bangs. Perfect. Look how cute that is. Oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> it's so stinking cute. Okay, and on this one on the left, I braided purple and green together. So she's got two green and a purple over here and a purple and green over here. And look at how cute that makes her look. This hippie chick is going to be so stinking cute. And I think I'm going to do the same. I'm going to lift these up and put some art glitter glue down up by the circles and then pull my braids into place. Push them down into place and then just hold it and that's going to anchor them in place where they need to be. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Look at that. So cute. Okay, and then I'm going to do what? Same thing over here. One drop of glue, put it down into place, and then just hold it. Art glitter glue is great for drying super fast or holding, holding things in place really fast. So it's perfect for this. And then I've got my hippie chick braids and then I can trim these lengths that I want them and I think I'm going to trim them all different lengths so I'm using the smallest hole on my crocodile and I punched my hole and then you want to put your eyelid into place and then you push it put it down onto the eyelet setting part of it move the lever forward push down and it crimps your eyelet onto place. It's easy as that. So now I've got an eyelet on both pieces. And I'm going to do the same thing on her legs and I'm going to use blue jean blue color for that. And again I'm going to use the small size. So I've punched my four holes like that into the 
legs top and bottom and then same thing I'm going to put my eyelid into place like that move this forward you set the dial forward on your crop a dial and then you want to set that eyelet. Squeeze it and set it. And I'm going to do that on all four. So here's what that looks like with eyelets in the neck and where the knees meet. Now I'm going to set these parts aside and I'm going to work on this piece to decorate it before I put the pieces together. And you could take an X-Acto knife and a cutting mat and cut these pieces out. Um, a lot of times I do that. On this particular doll, I think I'm going to leave them and I'm just going to color them later to match the page I'm putting it on. If you've watched any of my other paper art doll videos, you know I love to add the fine details. And on this one, I'm going to add some strings of beads on her neck. Her outfit has beads, like she's wearing some beads, and I just want to add to that. So I'm taking a paper piercer and a little mat, and I'm going to poke a little hole just up here where I can start it and put my bead needle through without ripping the breaking the bead needle or ripping the cardboard. So this is just going to help it along. And I'm using a very tiny sized bead needle and some very small seed beads. I put my beads into my little tidy tray and I've threaded my bead needle and I tied a double knot at the other end leaving a bit of a tail and then I did run it through some thread conditioner and if you don't have all these things that's okay this is just showing you my ideas for some inspiration. So I'm going to stick my needle through my cardboard from back to front and be really careful. Whoops, see, just I was just going to say, be careful not to pull it all the way through. When it gets to the knot, I'm going to be careful to leave it like that and I'm going to put some tape over that. Just a little piece of scotch tape and it will hold that into place. Okay, then I'm just going to thread some beads onto my needle. And make a string of beads until I get it the length that I want it for hanging around her neck. And then I'll come back and show you what to do next. I've got my string of beads on the front and now I'm just going to go from front to back like that, put them into place. Look how cute that's going to be to have our little strand of beads. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go across and go back through the other hole again. So I've got my beads where I want them to be. I've pulled my thread and I'm holding it with my thumb and now I'm going back into the hole that I started with like that. So that's across the back and holding that tight I'm going to put a piece of tape over that now. So now my thread is out the front and I'm going to do a second strand of beads, a different length. So I've got my second strand done and same as before, I'm going to go back through that hole. Put my thumb there to hold it. And now I'm going to go over the shoulder to the front. This is to tie a knot. So I'm going back through that hole in the front. And it's going to make a loop over the shoulder. And I'm going to go through the loop twice with my needle. That'll make a double knot. 
pulling that to the back and then I'm going to tape that down so I've put my little bit of art glitter glue on the back and some tape and then that holds those into place and now you've got your strands of beads look how cute super cute these are the details that I love so now I'm going to take a jump ring and I've opened it with a pair of needle nose pliers I have a charm of a peace sign and so I'm going to put my little jump ring over that bottom strand of beads and put my charm on and then close up that jump ring And now, she's got her bead strands and her peace sign. Super fun. Now we're going to add the legs, put the legs together. And like I showed with my doll cookie, she's put together with jump rings. So through the eyelets, you put a little jump ring. You open it, put it through, and close it. If you don't have jump rings or you just want to try it a different way, you can also use embroidery floss that works great. So I've got some here that looks like the blue jean color, or you could use any color really. And I'm going up through the back to the front and then down through the front like this. So you're making kind of a loop like that. And you don't want to tie it too tight because then it won't be as movable as you like. And I'm going to add a little detail to this. So I want to leave just a little bit of give to it. But I kind of take my fingers and pinch it together about where I want it to be with the, the give and play in the space. You need to leave a little space. And then I'm going to tie a knot. So I'm going to wrap it. And put my tails through. And then, like I've shown before, if you take a pin or your paper piercer and you hold that where you want that knot to go, and you pull down to that, your knot will go tight and leave that knot exactly where you want it. It's kind of a fun little trick. So there's that piece tied on, and look at how cool that is. You've got your movable part, and it's super cute. And then what you can do is take your tails, split your tails apart, and you take one around, that's the back, and one around here, and you're going to tie it in the front. Like that. And then I'm going to tie it into a little bow. You don't have to. You could leave a knot. I think a bow would be cute. So I'm putting a little bow. So that's what that looks like. Isn't that cute? And then you can take your art glitter glue. And you're going to want to put a, a little dab of art glitter glue right on the knot. It'll dry. And then you can cut the little tails off as long or as short as you want them. And then I also like to take some art glitter glue and put it on the tails because then that's going to hold them together. It just glues them together and then they stay put. They don't fray. So look how cute that is. Her little leg is together with a bow. Okay, so let's do that again. I'm going to go from the back to the front and then from the front to the back on my little lower piece
and I'm going to tie my knot. Then with the knot in the center between the two, I'm going to split those tails and bring one tail around one side and one around the other side of the loop. Get that knot in the middle. And I'm going to tie my bow in the front. There you go. Look at those cute legs. That is so cute. And they're movable. So cute. And now we're going to do the same thing on the neck. So for attaching the head, I'm going to go back to front, then down through this one, front to back. And then I'm going to repeat it and go back through this hole again. back through this hole again so you're just feeding it through a couple of times. Let me see twice I think will be enough. And this one I'm not going to do the bow. This one I'm just going to turn it over and tie a knot in those two pieces. Now to finish it off when I tie my little knot in the back I'm going to leave my tails I'm double knotting it, so I'm going through the loop twice with my tail to make a double knot. That'll hold it nice and tight. But then I'm going to take my tails and I'm going to glue them or tape them down here. So I added some, I used my uh, Tombow Mono drawing pen and I added some doodles. You know, the hippie chicks always drew love and daisies and things on their pants so I drew on their pants and I used put on some little flowers I glued on some flowers onto the top of her hair and underneath this braid just to add some and then um, on her glasses as you can see they're shiny I used uh, glossy accents and made her glasses shiny I think she just turned out so cute. I love it. I used a um, Arteza brush pen to color in that space because the page that she's going on is blue. So she's ready to go onto the page that she's going to be added to. So she's super cute. And now I'm working on this second one. And I've trimmed her pieces out. And as you can see, I trimmed out that shoulder and I added a little to the hip where this hand was covering so those pieces are cardboard and then what you can do is uh, take a Posca pen I'm going to take a Posca pen in purple and I'm just going to add like some sleeves to this dress come in here and just add some color back in where those are just file folder pieces I can make this purple down here and then bring it across like it's the creases just so that it 
hides that spot that you're adding. And then I'm going to add some purple sleeves. So you can always change them up and dress them up using paint pens and things. And then on this one I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make a sleeve. I like that bright purple. And then I'm going to go around all the edges of my doll with my black brush pen to fix those white edges. I'll do that off camera. I just wanted to show you how this would come together. So see now she's got purple on her outfit and it makes that arm have a great place for making it movable. And then her underneath, her skirt that's going to go underneath, I'm going to do the technique that's in one of the other videos and I will um, put that in the description or up on the screen for which which video that's in it to make this movable like this behind her top as I add it. So she's going to have a movable arm. And then her headpiece is going to go like this and that's going to have a little brad too. So those places um, as you've seen me do before, I'm just going to take my, I'm going to take my uh, two pieces and put them together where they're going to go, and then I'm going to poke a hole that the brad's going to go through. And then same with the head. Head is going to go on like this. And this one's going to have a brad. And I could go over that neck with my uh, flesh colored paint pan like I did the other one, but I have another idea for her neck, so I'll show you that. So I'm going to attach this to a piece of cardboard and put the brad on it and then put it into place here so that she'll have her movable piece underneath put these pieces together and then come back and show you the next step. So I put her neck head on and her arm and then her skirt is on a piece of cardboard with the brad so it makes her body movable, her bottom half of her body movable like that. And then what I'm going to do is take this cool little piece of sari silk I have that has beads all over it and I'm going to wrap that loosely around her neck like a scarf. It's going to look like a boho scarf. Like that. And then I'm going to just tie that with a string. And then it still makes her head movable, but it hides that neck brad. I think that's going to be really cute. I think that looks cute. I love her boho scarf. And when she's glued down to the page. I'm actually going to glue part of that scarf into place on the page too to hold it out like that. It's going to be super cute. So uh, before I add any more details to this one, I think I'm going to glue them onto the page, do my background, and then put it all together and show you what the final page looks like. So this is the page I've done and put my paper dolls on and it says peace, love, and paper dolls. So I've glued them on and I glued her braids spread out. This one's loose, but these are spread out and attached. And her head is attached, but her body moves. So you can move this one on the page and her legs move. Super cute. And then this one, her head moves. And she has her scarf. And I did glue that down to the page and spread it all out. And then she's got a movable arm. And her legs and skirt move. So 
So that's how it turned out. I hope you enjoyed this and that it inspired you to do something fun. Create a new paper doll. I love the hair on this one and the cool glasses, the beaded necklace, the movable legs, the legs done with embroidery floss as a different way to do your articulation on the doll and just some fun accents and things and it just makes a really fun art journal page. So I hope that this inspired you to create something fun in your art journal. Paper dolls and articulated movable pieces in your journals just make them so much fun. So this will be added to the playlist of the paper doll, art paper doll series that I'm doing. And um, I'll have a link in the description box below for supplies I've used, the link to the Etsy store to, if you're interested in this art paper doll uh, kit plus she's got a lot of really fun other ones to check out and the link to how I made this paper doll named Cookie. So those will be in the description box for you to check out and check out some of the other fun videos on how to do different articulated paper dolls. Thanks for stopping by. Go make some art because art soothes the heart. <music>